All right, welcome everyone um, to the first webinar of 2024. Very excited. Denise, you've taken over Beth's domains, it looks like. Yep, yep, she's in Austin. I've got Homer. Here we are. <laughs> I know, I should probably make that disclaimer. So Denise has dogs in her place. Genevieve has dogs in her place. Linda has cats. So you may just see the cat come across at any given point and join us. So um, give everybody just, we have one more minute before we kick off and get started. And let some people, I see that people are still coming into the attendee list here. Welcome to the Trainertainment team and to Phil and Elise. Hello, you can't hello. use Trainertainment team, right? Phil, are you back? Or are you doing this from? I Dine am doing this from Dining. <laughs> How I'll is Dining really going? Can... How's it going? Awesome, awesome, really, really good. Yeah, very good Thank summit. You. Good to right. hear. All right, um, it is two o'clock on the dot and I like to respect people's time. So we will get started. Um, as I said, welcome to the 2024 free webinar series. This is the first one in the series. And But before I jump into the topic for this one, I just wanted to let you know, in case you wanted to put it on your calendar for the upcoming months, what the series is. So this is February 8th where we're kicking it off. We will have webinars in April, May, June, July, August, October, and December. We added two additional webinars this year to our lineup. In the past, we've done six, and we are doing eight this year. And pretty exciting because we're doing something new this year where some of these webinars will have some guests on this for expert guests to join us. And that is the case for today as well. And so I will introduce you to our expert guest that's joining for this topic. So you guys signed up and came to the first one, which is Mastering Meeting Management. So that's what we're going to jump into today. And your host for this is I'm Candy Kelly. I'm the COO of Trainertainment. And you'll have our whole Trainertainment team here who is also going to be taking part and answering questions and commenting as we go along. And our expert guest is our coach. So we brought our Trainertainment coach in and Linda Norman is joining us. Linda, will you take a few minutes and just introduce yourself and your company and kind of what you do and then how you're involved with us as Trainer Entertainment? All right. My name is Linda Norman. It is nice to virtually meet everyone. Um, I have, I'm the CEO of Unleashed Solutions and I work with small businesses to develop their leadership teams. I work with um, entrepreneurs who started their business and they love handling everything yet they still need to be able to grow. So I work developing those teams and helping put systems in place so that businesses can scale and that the owners know the business can survive without me. I can continue on and um, enjoy life afterwards. <laughs> so that's what I've done. I've done this for going on 15 years now and got to know Beth through a CEO peer group and now have the wonderful opportunity to see Candy flourishing in the COO role and this team develop and help facilitate their strategic vision. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for agreeing to do this. I kind of threw it on uh, and Linda and she graciously agreed. Um, and then from our team, if you guys want to unmute real quick and just say hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Hello. 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 Awesome. Um, and I see Beth's name out there. So I don't know if she's actually here and listening to me, but so everyone say hi to Beth. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, let, before we continue, let's really thank the people who are responsible for bringing the webinars to you. So our sponsors, Elise, uh, why don't you Go first and introduce yourself and who you represent. Awesome. So my name is Elise and I'm with Roller. We're a venue management software. Um, we cover ticketing, point of sale, waivers, party booking, self-service kiosks, cashless wallets, mobile ordering, all kinds of stuff. But um, we love being a part of these and being a part of the train entertainment community and getting to connect with people and learn and uh, just share. So we're happy to be here. Thanks for having us, Candy. Thanks, Elise. Bill, you're up next. Hi, everybody. Bill Scholler from Semnot Solutions out of Dallas, Texas. We are a card system provider for uh, if you have a small game room, large game room, a park, and you need access management to uh, rides and attractions, laser tag, 
and again, anything games. And uh, we also uh, help with uh, management of your redemption and um, all the things, all the analytics that you're going to need to, you know, run a successful family entertainment center. Awesome. Thank you guys for sponsoring. And um, Delta you're Strike welcome. is not present. So the other sponsor is Delta Strike, which is uh, specializes in the best laser tag equipment out there. There are quite a few conferences and trade shows going on right now, though, so they were unable to be with us. So let's jump in. First, I have a quick poll for you guys. Um, so let me launch this poll real quick so that you can answer on the screen. How many hours a week do you spend in meetings? So the options that you're going to see out there are less than an hour, one to three hours, three to five hours, or five plus hours. Okay. Letting people answer. Slowing down a little bit on the answers. I got like 26 people in here and only 11 people have answered. So come on people, a few more answers in here. <laughs> they might be doing me. <laughs> they might be joining. Also, if you're on a phone, I know I think that the polls sometimes are a little bit more difficult to do on a Zoom webinar on a phone, so. All right, it looks like one to three is the majority, which is what I assumed for operators in this space. <laughs> Alicia, you said if you could answer, it'd be five plus plus plus. I'm with you. I do nothing but meetings. So we all spend a decent amount of our time in a week in a meeting of some sort. And so we all need to get the most of that of those meetings because we don't get our time back. Uh, and I don't think I know how to, is the poll still in front of all of you? Yes. Go? Five seconds. Let me see how now it's that. gone. It's gone. Okay. I'm going to share the results real quick. And so you can see that 54% said one to three hours and 38%. So it's not that far behind how many people said three to five hours. Five hours of a work week though, is a lot of time to spend in it. So the goal for today is the importance of effective meeting management and its impact on team communication and productivity. So how many of you, and you can um, say me in the chat, how many of you have been in a meeting that seemed to have a straightforward agenda, like you approved of the agenda going into it, but then during the meeting, it was overtaken by tangents. There were side discussions. There were all these stories that then had no relevance to anything that was on the agenda. Um, and then you walked away from the meeting and you were like, how do I get my time back one? And I think I have less clarity on what we were supposed to talk about than I did before I walked in there. How many of you have gone through that? Um, yeah, I see the me's coming through. And so during those meetings that are like that, energies dwindle. So people are not engaged anymore. It's chaos and attention spans will wander. They start to think about what they need to pick up at the grocery store on their way home from work to cook dinner. They're not paying attention to anything that's going on anymore. And then the ambitious and productive planning that we were like, we did a good job. We had an agenda. We were ready to go. It all goes away and becomes a, cha a chaotic collage of unrelated information that's not linked. And I don't know what to do. What are the action steps to do when I leave there? And so... We have all, I saw someone said 80% of the time the meetings I go to could be an email. That is how so many feel. There are memes about that. That's how people feel all the time. And then people will be like, yeah, we are, we are so productive. We were like in the meeting for two hours. Let me say that the duration of a meeting does not equate to its effectiveness. Actually, I think what is on the screen is correct. The longer the meeting, the less that's accomplished probably in that. And so it's not measured, success is not measured on how many hours you spend talking about things and in meetings, but it's measured in tangible outcomes that emerge from the time that is respected and utilized wisely. So that's what the goal is for today is give you some of those items to streamline meetings because so a streamlined meeting can impact team communication and just overall productivity. And that's because when you have a meeting that is streamlined, you have people who feel valued. They understand what they're trying to achieve together. They have voice in the meetings where work decisions actually get made to make the work better and more effective and more fun and more engaging. 
And when you look at that way, an investment in learning how to run better meetings makes really good financial sense for everyone. Linda, can you share some examples of how streamlined meetings, how you have seen like chaotic meetings, and then you go in and you help them streamline and how it has that type of impact? Absolutely. When you were talking about not being able to recover time back, um, and there's a cost to that time. And so I had a client that I started working with and they each area had anywhere from three to seven meetings a week. And we actually laid it out. There were 290 man hours a week being spent in meetings. And when I asked what was being done in those meetings, they said, well, we're just talking through the reports and making sure that John is taking care of this problem or that everyone knows about this update. And I said, is that really worth? And we calculated out. It was amazing how much it cost them. <clears throat> so just being able to say, okay, let's find a way where we all have one meeting a week, but everything is getting covered. And the cost savings, we looked at it over the course of a year. Um, it was over $200,000. Just That's amazing. Crazy. That is amazing. I think um, that's a huge impact. And then also just your team morale. No one wants to sit there if you think I, that could have been an email. If I'm engaged and I'm a part of it and it's actually a productive conversation, changes your team dynamics completely. And I'm a proponent. I do think, I don't, it doesn't matter to me if you're running just an arcade, if it's a bowling alley, if you're a full-fledged, I have... 80 attractions underneath our roof, meetings have a place and a time because people who don't know what's going on feel also disengaged and are not productive and are not collaborative with your team. And so there has to be something in place where you solve issues and then there's a cascading effect that gets everyone involved in the actions for the solutions that we have to bring them together. And so since we have to have them, let's talk about some tips to do it. My first tip is for meeting preparation is be prepared. I can't tell you how many meetings I have been in in my career where I walked in and you could tell that the person who called the meetings kind of just winging it. They had like maybe one thing they wanted to talk to us about, but the rest of it, they're just kind of winging it and filling in time and space. Um, so be prepared. For Meetings should happen at the same time. So if you have leadership meetings or departmental meetings, um, when I did come, for, I came from restaurants too, when we had restaurants, it was manager's meeting Wednesday at 2 p.m. And I can still tell you it was 2 p.m. that we had it every single Wednesday. Um, so having it at the same time each week, it ensures that you don't interrupt other work that you might be doing because you can plan around that meeting. And, an also, and also the length of the meeting should be set. You should start on time and end on time because we want to respect everyone's time. Same place. Um, I can also tell you that my our manager meetings was done at table seven in the dining room every Wednesday at 2 p.m. So even if it is just virtually, we log in virtually, it's on a Zoom every Wednesday, that's still a place. We all have to be somewhere to be together if it's at the conference room A, but having it at the same time, same place. Linda, what are the reasons you don't you don't get to come to a leadership meeting? Do what? What are Sorry. the reasons why you don't get to, oh, if you uh, death get it? and vacation, that's it. Death and, death and vacation are the two reasons why you don't, why you aren't coming to a leadership meeting. So um, the last part is that it should have the same agenda. And where I know that there are topics that should be different in the agenda, where, how those topics fall, there's probably a header that you can put that so we can go through the exact same agenda each time. This also allows participants to bring their brain to the table. We want people to participate in the meetings. We want those diverse perspectives. And so some people need time to prepare and don't think off the cuff as well as others. They're internal processors and external processors if you've ever gone through our personality, any of our personality webinars. And so we want to give everyone the opportunity to be prepared to bring their brain to the table. Linda, have you helped teams develop a good agenda for ongoing meetings? And what does that typically look like? Absolutely. <clears throat> um, I think one of the first questions is start with why. Why are you having this meeting? If you are trying to do big plans or a very specific project, that's not the right format where you need a same time, same place. If it's a quick one-off, that's very different. But when you're talking about we're trying to maintain momentum on what we're working on, we're trying to keep everyone updated, we're trying to make sure that we're hitting our targets and everyone is aware, 
are aware of what's going on and what I need to be doing this week to keep us moving. That's where you get that great power when you have that same time, same place, um, start on time, end on time, and same agenda. And so when you start with that why, first of all, the meeting should always help your culture. <clears throat> I firmly believe that your culture can be fit into every single meeting that you have. I have some clients that start with a prayer. I have some that shout out, um, you know, give praise for good job. You met our core values, whatever that is, keep your culture alive in those meetings too. Um, and so I think a great agenda, and I've seen it adjusted here and there, but a great agenda, there's water cooler talk. We all need to connect as humans. And so having a quick check-in, what was great last week personally and professionally, just so everyone knows, but keep it time-based. So if I let everyone in the meeting say, tell me about your weekend, we could be there for 15 minutes and have gotten nothing done. If I say just really quick, one personal, one professional best, Boom, boom. And you can get around the table in under five minutes. Um, and people get used to that. Um, I think building a cadence for reporting is really important. Everyone needs to know what's going on, but you don't want a presentation of numbers. So quick reporting piece. And then let's get into the meat of how do we talk through what do we need to solve? How do we get everyone engaged so that they're in on that solution and then they're committed to it? And so that's generally the structure of the agenda that I think is really good. I also think some people miss out on the opportunity to cleanly wrap up a meeting. Usually everyone's trying to run out of the room as fast as humanly possible. Wrap it up clean. What did we agree to do? When is it going to be done by? How did we do? And what information does everyone need to know? I love that you put on the agenda to have a reporting of numbers ongoing. I have worked for companies where the numbers were reported on a weekly basis, so we're always there. And then I've worked with companies that did exactly what you just said. We had the big quarterly presentation where someone brought out the flip, the slideshow and showed us all the numbers that we're supposed to care about. Um, and I am much more connected when I know about them on an ongoing basis. Yeah. And honestly, if it's numbers that people in the room are responsible for, that's even better because then I can say, I'm my number's a little off because I couldn't get a hold of people or my number is way on because we closed this new group, this new company that's going to come in once a month to our center and have their events. And you can you can report on those things quickly and everyone sees the progress and how it's impacting the company. Elise, you said that you spend five plus plus plus. I think you put three or four pluses after that. How do you feel and how important do you feel like a good, clear agenda is going into those meetings? Um, I think it's super important. And even if I don't have like a super detailed agenda, I've started to put notes in my meeting appointments. So at least with bullet points to make sure that we hit the things that we're intending to hit. Um, and then it's also easy to keep notes in it, uh, with Google meeting. Um, cause if I, if I don't, you know, you'll get on and you'll just catch up with the person and then you'll forget. And then the time goes over and it just doesn't feel purposeful. So um, something else we also do internally at Roller is we have slide decks for a lot of meetings, which seems very formal, but it also keeps a cadence of things and it makes it easier when it's fortnightly or monthly or weekly to go back and update things. So um, that's been pretty helpful. I still am in a lot of meetings though, and um, not all of them are as effective as others or productive as others, but you know, that can't be avoided, I think, but I'm excited to hear all these different tips and, and put some into action. You can tell you work for an international company. Now you just said fortnightly. I know. Isn't it fun? My husband keeps making fun of me that I keep throwing some of these terms out there. So <laughs> accent coming next. Yes. Um, I want to put some in for and get some input from you guys as an audience. So let's say you are in a meeting and the stakes are high. It's something super important that you need to decide upon. Maybe it's your next 90 day promotional calendar, something really important to like bringing revenue, all the things going. And you're trying to tackle that. And um, you have a domineering discussion dominator. Now, guys, we all know who this is, right? Like it's the person who monopolizes the conversation. They always dominate it with their opinions, their ideas. They tend to talk the most and they're inter they interrupt others. So even if you start to say something, they're like, no, 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 it's good. Like, this is what I mean, or let me tell you more about it. And so they interrupt and they steer the agenda the way that they wish. How, have, how do you handle that scenario when it happens to you guys? Um, use the chat box and tell me. And 
my team i'm not i can't see all of the chat i see some but maybe not all of them so if anyone puts anything in there like what do you do in that situation anybody anybody in my team want to tell me what y'all do when y'all are coaching I'll start asking other people specifically to answer questions, be more direct, just to at least um, kind of spread it around a little bit. So instead of asking the whole room a question, ask someone who hasn't contributed yet. I like that. Deidre Frazier says, I asked them to hold that thought. Hold that thought for a minute. Um, in person, we used to have the talking stick or something similar. That is fun. So Linda, how do you, what are some of the things that you say to calm the scenario and guide the meeting back on track? Um, usually I try and set the ground rule and I love the term squirrel. Uh, we're getting off track. We're going on a tangent, but squirrel just works well, possibly because I love dogs. And so I'm used to that. I have this lovely squirrel popper. I don't know if you can see this here. But when it starts getting too much off track, I just kind of do that and everyone stops. And then we get a chance to reset because what I've discovered is the person who is usually dominating the conversation <clears throat> is not going to let me get a statement in where I can go, hold that thought. Um, I actually encountered that today and I've got to find a better squirrel that knocks the webcam through the um, remote meetings, but have something fun and agree on the ground rules before, because I think, you know, what you said, what's some fun ideas that are out there. If everyone agrees on it and then <clears throat> the squirrel gets popped. Okay. I know I was going off on a tangent. Sorry. I was dominating the conversation. Sorry. Um, That's something yeah. that, oh, I'm sorry, Candy. Go ahead, Denise. Something kind of similar that <clears throat> allows everybody at the table to kind of play a part in keeping us on track. Um, is I use these little, um, it was, I stole the idea from, from one of our other fabulous trainer entertainment coaches, but I use like football flag, you know, like the flags that the referees <laughs> throw in a game. And there's several of them laid out across the table. And at any point in a meeting, if somebody is going off on a tangent or a sidebar, or we're going down a rabbit hole you can pick up the flag and throw it and everybody, it's a nice way to say, hey, stop talking. Um, <laughs> but it also engages everybody and makes it makes it a fun, fun thing for everyone to do. Yep, and you just need a, a ball and some fabric, right? Like you can make yep. that. Yeah, it's a little, literally a square, like uh, you can go get uh, bandanas from Hobby Lobby, cut them into fourths, put a ball in the center of it and put a hair tie around it and you've got a little football flag. So yeah, we are in the business of fun. So we can make these things fun that keep it in for productive meetings. So referee flag, a plush squirrel. I'll put plush squirrel. I have never seen the popper squirrel, Linda. So I like that too. <laughs> Um, having a timekeeper, I think also helps somebody that like giving them something fun. Elise, you talked about a talking stick so you got to talk if you were holding the stick uh that reminds me of summer camp movies like old school summer camp movies that you would watch um and then genevieve had a screaming goat sound <laughs> i just was i just remembered i was in it that's how and linda you reminded me because it was a web meeting and so it was just this kind of like funny drawing sound to get everyone to stop where they were i think they had a button that's all great ideas but I do think you should have something in place to if you keep that going forward because it's bad if you let that person dominate a whole meeting and like why is that bad honestly it will make other people not want to contribute to the meeting and if you don't have every you you ask them to the table for a reason you chose the people who are involved in that meeting for a reason it's because you like their perspective they bring their brain they have some creative ideas for solving issues and if you if they check out and are not participating then you have a lack of creativity and a lack of different options to choose, which, and then they're disengaged. And if they're disengaged and they're not connected to the resolution because this person dominated it and it's like, we gave in, fine, we'll do what you want to do. They're not connected to what this solution solution chose to be. They're not going to help you implement it. They're not going to be committed to the action plans for that. And so then we're lowering productivity and not increasing it then. 
I think one other thing too to add there, Candy, is that you also you have the domineering person, but you'll have the people who are very insightful but timid, and they don't necessarily always want to step in. And so having someone in the room who's not only making sure the strong personality isn't talking the whole time, but is drawing those people in and giving them the opportunity. Denise, could you tell me a little bit about what you heard there? What's your thought? Elise, and pulling them into. So it's just as important to make sure you draw people in as it is to pause people who are willing to constantly contribute. And that people is why an outside facilitator is great for your really important meetings because we get involved in our own head and our own contribution to the meeting sometimes. So the, for those big, important strategic meetings, an outside facilitator will notice the people who look like they have something smart to say but are not raising their hand to say it. Um, Good meeting management should also foster collaboration. And I understand this is an ongoing process, but having a consistent meeting strategy does help you provide a framework for good collaboration. And so we want that strategy to focus on being open and inclusive. Everyone should get a chance to talk. Everyone should get the floor sometimes. We want those, the, those perspectives to come out because the differing somewhere in the middle is the best possible outcome. It's not my idea for a solution or Linda's idea for a solution that's the best. It's probably a combination of the two that will give us the best solution there. Um, and having clearly defined objectives. And so Linda, as a facilitator, what is your suggestion for meeting structure that allows this? And how do you know when to break teams up? Like the meeting, the people involved in one meeting gets too big. Right. <clears throat> I think when you feel like I've got to, I have a sidebar with two or three people that were in the room. The rest of it, I'm just going to make sure I'm pushing out the information. So it's picking the right people who are in the room because every single person that's sitting there ideally is contributing to the solution. And if you continually are finding yourself saying, why don't we meet after this meeting and we'll solve this problem? Why don't we meet after this meeting? That's, that's an indication that you've got too many people in the room and you're not solving it. And so having that good structure where everyone should be a part of the solution and not just getting information, I think is key to defining that piece of it. Um, I also think too, that knowing when you're talking about collaboration, you want to have a set amount of time, but you also want to have a structure. So how are we going to talk about the problems we're facing? Not just let's put it out there and discuss until the meeting time runs out, but how are we going to get to a solution? And having some kind of structure where I'm going to engage every single person there. All right, um, our ticketing system isn't working. Candy, is that what you're seeing or do you think there's something else? Dan, do you think there's something else? So going through and asking everyone, do you see a different problem that we're not really talking about? Um, and then getting people to propose solutions, but trying to facilitate that in a way where Remember, it's not about individuals, it's about the company. And if you were coming in, so let's say if this you're not here, you're going in as a consultant to one of our competitors, what would you tell them to do to fix this problem? So thinking about it from a perspective, not as an employee or not as an owner in this business, how would you look outside? It gives you a different perspective on what you're facing. And so I think helping build some structure, number one, around how much time you're gonna spend problem solving during the meeting, give some structure on how you're gonna problem solve. And then the most important thing is don't just say, okay, great, and then move on to the next thing. What are you gonna do about it? What are the action steps? Capture the to-dos. Who needs to know about this besides the people that are sitting there in that meeting? How are you gonna communicate that and who's gonna do it by when? So make action from the conversation. Otherwise it's just gonna come right back up again. Um, You guys, will be so thrilled to know that after this webinar, we have we may have a gift that helps you put that issue problem, uh, that solving problems forever into a structure that is very similar to what Linda just said there. Um, Linda, you said something that was incredibly smart that I think that we could all learn from. If they're there just to get information from the meeting or if they're there to contribute to the solutions that for the meeting is a very, that's a that's a clear line of like who should be involved. And there are, I understand there's big employee meetings and the, the point of those is to push information out. The meetings we're talking about are like manager meters, meetings or department head meetings or event committee meetings. We have events in our facilities all the time and things like that where we actually have to solve items. 
Um, we've got some stuff that's come up on the chat there. Elise said overly detailed agendas and not giving people space to contribute creates suffocating environment. That is the flip side to an agenda is like you, you're talking about when they cram it so full and they say, we got to cover all this in 45 minutes. Well, that and like, if it's overly detailed, I had a, a boss many jobs ago who used to put so much detail in the agenda that we were just racing through the agenda. And it wasn't like, I found meetings are more productive if you just say, like, give a headline and let people, and you might know more detail, but sometimes for an in-person meeting or, or a collaborative meeting, giving too much detail on a sheet of paper, people don't feel like they have to engage or contribute. Did you feel like you could have just read the paper and been like, yeah, out. yeah. Like this meeting could have been an email. Like that's the prophecy, right? Yeah. Um, Lauren Davis says that we do a big circle. Um, sorry, I went forward. Um, to say what you feel like expressing. It's a no judgment. Others listen and everyone ends up opening up, expressing their thoughts. This takes each person three minutes while she writes everything down to discuss. So um, uh, it sounds like that's what maybe how she opens her meeting. What is something you'd like to discuss at this meeting? And everyone gets some time and she can put that on there, which is great. Um, from what you said, Linda, too, one of the things I'd say is have clear communication channels. There will be things that you solve in a department head meeting or an event committee meeting or the different meetings that need to be channeled down to other people. So what is your communication channel so that everyone knows the outcomes of this meeting and knows what they're responsible for? And also, how what's the channel up to that meeting? If I feel like I have something that needs to be discussed in this meeting, how do I get that on the agenda? What's that channel so that everyone has a chance to think about that topic or that headline prior to the meeting? And I'm not always just bringing it on them during the meeting when we may have internal processors there. Yeah, exactly. um, the last thing about collaborative environment is accountability is not a bad word, people. So don't be afraid of the accountability and being collaborative. Think of it as having like a accountability buddy um, to get, make sure that you're doing the things. Because when I take on a responsibility from a, something that we solved or an action plan we put, I'm not just taking it on for myself. I'm taking it on for the people in that team and then for the business as the greater good. And so I need to be held accountable for that because that is how we move forward to grow. I think so many people think of accountability as a bad word, and it is not. People actually, most of the time, want accountability. Do you find that people prefer accountability, Linda? Absolutely. And what I found, I actually saw it this week. Um, someone came in and they said, I crushed every all my to-dos because they assigned to-dos every week. And he ended up with a ton of them. He said, I crushed them. He was so excited because the week before he'd gotten called out for not getting any of them done. And that made him proud and it made us move forward. And then it triggered other people to make sure. And even if it's right before the meeting, then it got done, it got done. And that was what was important. And it, it he was proud and it made a difference to the team. I think we all would like to feel proud in what we do. Um, Linda covered some of this a minute ago, but like effective decision-making. How many of you have been in meetings for the same issue? You talk about it over and over and over and over again. But nothing really ever gets done, but no one's happy with the way that things ran over there. Like no one, everyone from every department hates it. Um, you got the people from go-karts who complain about it. The people at the front counter complain about it. The, you know, the people who sit the door, they all complain about that same thing. It keeps coming up. We know it's an issue, but what are we doing about it? Why does it keep coming up? problem there is, is there's probably not an effective structure for solving meeting, it's for solving problems. And so Linda, this is where I feel like an outside facilitator is the most helpful because we like to politic and we like to say what, what we want done, what our solution is. That's the most important one, you know? Um, so will you go over again, and there will be a handout that is sent as a gift to everyone after this webinar, but will you go through those steps a little bit slower this time about how do you do effective decision making? Absolutely. Um, and I think when you talk about outside, first of all, anyone who's outside the organization, it's not affecting my day-to-day -day job. That problem is not causing me pain. It's causing people I care about pain, but it's not causing me pain. Whereas the person who's having that pain cause typically wants to let's solve it as fast as possible. But a lot of times that might not be the right solution. Um, it's just kind of pushing it down. It's kicking the can down the road. And I think outside facilitators help call that 
when it's starting to happen too. I think question number one. All right, Candy, you talked about this problem is happening over in go-karts. Is that the only place? Is it happening somewhere else? What is the root cause of the problem? If it really is something just broke, do we really need to have problem solving or do we just need to call the service tech? If it's <laughs> the fifth time it's broken and they won't show up and it's costing us a ton of money and we had to give tons of refunds, that's the problem. But is the problem really the machine? Is it the vendor? Is it how we set up the contract? Is it how we're documenting things? Dive into what the true issue is. So first of all, ask, is this the real problem or is there something else that's really causing this? And then the next question is, what are the potential solutions? Just put out potential and try to make sure that you ask questions because that's number one. If we just say, I think we should do this. That's not going to drive anyone into a conversation. Ask questions. What do you think we should do? Would this help solve this part of the problem? Pull people into those conversations because that's where you're going to get the best perspective. So identify the problem, discuss the possible solutions, and then ultimately you have to come up with, all right, this is the path we're going to go. There is an action item. I think one of the things too that people kind of fear a little bit when you talk about collaboration and team Collaboration does not mean decision by consensus. Someone still has to say, we are going to make this decision. I know some of you think it might be better to go this way, but this is the right choice based on financials, partnership agreements, whatever that is. Are we all okay with that? So once we state the solution, make sure everyone puts their hands in. We are all in on this. Yes, we support it. We're going to make sure it happens. And then we can move on and capture what those action items are to solve it. Um, a small note that I have about effective decision-making is that you might not always, you're not always going to choose the right course of action. You're gonna think you got all the information. You're gonna think you asked all the right questions sometimes. You're gonna choose a course of action. And in eight weeks, that issue is gonna come back up again. You're gonna be like, I thought we solved this. I thought, and that's okay, it's going to happen. We, when that does, you're just going to readdress the issue with new information that we have because we learn something new about it, which helps us get better, get more at the root of the problem, solve it for, forever. But doing something that is the wrong course of action, thinking that it's right, is way better than doing absolutely nothing at all about the issue. And so we're not going to have you know batting average of amazing amount. We're going to choose the wrong thing sometimes. It's okay. Um. Elise loves collaboration does not mean decision by consensus. Um, here's where I think a meet is where the like meat and potatoes is. Great meetings. You get, you knock it out of the park. You follow all of the strategies we just have. You have a great agenda. You let people know ahead of time. We've got clear communication channels. People are contributing. The guys, a meeting is only as good as the actions taking outside of the meeting. And so having a great meeting strategy is a great start but the real magic happens outside of that meeting. So Linda has alluded to this a couple of times, always identify the who, what, and by when of what needs to be done. Candy, I need you to pull the, the reports for how many um, parties we had in the month of February. I need that to me by Friday, February 16th. I know who, I know when it's due by, I know what is expected of me. We are all clear who it is. So when we leave the meeting, Genevieve isn't waiting and being like, I'm waiting on those numbers. Am I supposed to pull them? I thought Candy was going to pull them. And I thought that Genevieve was going to pull them. Like we make it very clear who's, who is doing what and by when. And then be committed to the, the things to get done outside of the time frame. Um, meetings are for strategy. Action comes after. And action is what really solves the issues and pushes growth. But if you walk away from that meeting and stuff that paper or your action items into a binder and then only look at it 15 minutes before the next week's meeting starts, then you're not really committed to the action that needs to be done to solve those issues. Um, Linda, I'd love for you to share a story about how as a facilitator or a leader of meetings, because sometimes we have internal leaders of meetings, how do you encourage the action outside of the meetings? I think first of all is not having someone just capture it and read it off. If I actually have to read, I will have this done by next Tuesday so that Candy can complete her to-do to by next Thursday. 
That's very different than someone reading off, Linda will do this by Tuesday. Nod my head. If I state it, it's different. So having people actually say, I'm, doing this. I'm responsible for it. Um, so I think that's a part of the meeting. I do think there's an opportunity when you start seeing something happen. So let's go back to that accountability. No one likes to be accountable, but when I'm really wanting to contribute, typically I'm going to, if I'm called out on that, I'm going to want to start doing that. If you start seeing a problem, whether it is uh, your numbers aren't on, it might be a one-time thing, but if it's a continual problem, then having those regular conversations, one-on-one, um, -on -one, not in the meeting. I think that that's important too. But being aware, is this a problem that the whole group in the meeting needs to address so that we are getting that action that's moving us forward? Or do I need to have a separate one-on-one -on -one conversation to see that? Um, I'll give you an example. We had a, I had a client who they looked at their numbers for three weeks in a row. Those numbers looked terrible. It was awful. In the first couple of weeks, everyone said, I think the problem is this. Actually, I think the problem is this. We tried one thing, we tried another thing, and the numbers still didn't look good. And then finally, I had a sidebar with one of them. And I said, are you actually making the number of calls every week that you're putting in this, you know, putting in the sales scorecard? Because our sales revenue isn't showing that. And they said, well, I'm leaving messages. I think all of you know how well that works all the time, right? They're going to call us back. So it was evident that at some point it was um, an individual problem. I think calling people out individually if something's not happening, otherwise have people own it and say, yes, I am going to do this. And I know, side note, his behavior completely changed the next week. He said, I made 15 calls that resulted in this uh, new business. And just having for the rest of the team to have that information that these aren't calls where I connected with people, these are calls where I left messages. Ah, oh, that, that, and now I'm looking at the information under a different light than with the previous information that I had been given. So post-meeting follow-up is really important. And so like have going around and saying, what are you, I have some clients that I end our meetings with, what are you, what are you doing in the next two, in the next week? And they will tell me, I am getting this to you know, this person. All right. And so they all say it themselves. Um, I do like recaps. I am a big fan of recaps because sometimes uh, you, we may have heard something um, or, but they didn't. And then when I get the recap from someone, I'm like, yes, I do remember that now. I need to, I need to take care of that or whatever it is. And I have missed it on my notes. And so having someone, and but I don't think it should be the same person sometimes because that disengaged. So I actually like to have the person who like keeps up with some notes for the recap to be spread around. Um, some other things with having a single leader, if you have problems always leading the meeting, I have some clients that will share that. So you know, week one, um, Genevieve leads it this week. I lead it next week and Denise leads it the next week and we go around in a rotation. It allows each member to have a little bit more ownership of the meeting, the meeting agenda and the outcomes of the meeting as well. Awesome. Are there any questions out there yet? Okay. So if there are questions, put them in now. Um, and what I would like for you to do the most in the chat is what is one key, key takeaway? What is one thing you want to go change about your meetings in the next week? Um, put that in the chat box and share that with us. And I'm going to ask uh, our sponsors who, if Phil has dropped off, so I don't have him anymore. So at least it's just you. What is one thing that you would like to see different about the meetings you go into the next week? Um, and I know I'm guilty of this all the time, but um, making them efficient so that we're highly engaged and able to focus. So creating collaborative and interactive environments so that it's effective. Um, and then maybe at the end of a slide deck or at the end of an agenda, there's usually a Q and A, but maybe there's like a action item section. Cause I think that uh -huh. you know, like a next steps or an action items would be great to add on. So I think I'll, I like I'll, I'll throw that one out there. I like that. Anybody from Fair Entertainment, is there anything that you make sure you do at all of your meetings? Like it's your go-to, like you make sure. I'm going to throw out, I saw Skyly here saying, key takeaway, don't wing it. That's a big one, Skyly. Yes, we can all get an amen for that one. Um, I think that 
for me, one of the things I always try to make sure is that there is that when there are action items, that they are clear, each person is clear on exactly what that action item is. Mm -hmm. That yeah. clarity is really important. Natasha just added to the chat. It's like she, you guys are on the same page. She says, I'm going to make sure I'm recapping with my expectations if each person is clear for the next week. Hey, Natasha, what's up? Mind math. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Including myself. I think that's just as important to me as it is for anyone else in the meeting to summarize what my action items are. Um, you know, we work with a visionary. Beth is a visionary. She's always thinking, and one of, and she's an out external processor. And so, I I referred earlier to internal and external processors. Sometimes when you deal with an external processor, they'll tell you all of the ideas that they're thinking in the head in their head, but they're just processing through it. So if you are someone who likes to get things done, you're like, okay, so you want me to pull that report, and then you want me to analyze that, and then I need to find out what the cost of goods are, and then you got 15 things just through their processing point what I learned to do with an external processor is say so what action would you like me to take to help you with this that's good so that's yeah. very clear because they don't want you to do all the things because then what happen what can happen sometimes and a lot of business owners people who start and entrepreneurs are external processors they have a million ideas you'll go do one of the things you thought they asked you to do and bring it back to them they'll be like uh thanks what what is this for and then you're like crushed why did you do that but it's because of a lack of clarity so recapping what your expectations are or what you believe is expected of you is very important as well um when meetings are done right like again they have the power to increase team communication we want everybody to take part in that because we want those differing personalities those differing perspectives and those differing solutions because somewhere in the middle is the right solution for how we should move forward It'll increase productivity because we have more buy-in from people when they feel informed and educated about what we're doing and what we're working towards. And it builds a culture of collaboration. Um, Linda, any last thoughts from you or tips for anybody or any recommendations of like resources that they can look at? I think um, Patrick Lencioni has some great books out there. If you've not read it, they're easy to read. They're great parables. Um, but he's got a great book of called Death by Meeting. He's got some structure in there. EOS, uh, Entrepreneurial Operating System, they have a great level 10. There's so many different out there, but I think Trainertainment has done a fantastic job, of, especially for anyone in the industry, of making sure that this, this is going to cover what you need at a leadership level, at a departmental level. And more importantly, where are we just putting out data? because that should be the quick part. And then where do we need to have the meeting conversations? Because remember, every meeting is an opportunity to number one, build your culture. Number two, start building up your next level of leaders. And if you don't give them that forum to start having those conversations, you're missing out on a potential that potential new manager, someone that could bring new life into an area of your business. And so make sure you give that forum to create that le the leadership opportunities. I love that. Um, we, Trainertainment does this. You've heard us take make reference to our own clients. We do this with our business pro system. You'll see at the bottom left where it says meaningful meetings. That's what we call it in our system is that we want to have meaningful meetings. And so we help people put their agendas together, run their meetings, facilitate. We help with quarterly and annual plannings. And that is part of a bigger system that we created called our business pro system. If any of you would like to learn more about our business pro system, Jerome and Dan are happy to uh, talk with you at any point. They are our sales team. So feel free to schedule a growth call with us today and talk about like maybe you, even if it's like a small cons consultative thing, hey, here's the agendas I'm running. We will happy to talk with you about any of that. Linda, if there's anything that you've said today that has piqued the interest of our audience and they want to learn more about you, where would you send them? You can reach out to me um, through my website, unleashedcompany.com. So I love dogs. I think I mentioned that. <laughs> I want to unleash business owners and those within the business. So unleash your company. That's the way to remember it. Um, and I am happy to put my cell phone number in the chat if you want to follow up on anything else as well. I don't, I think I can do that. Am I allowed to type in the chat? Yes, you are allowed. We <laughs> so have a, taken the, we've unleashed you. You can, you can type in the chat there. I feel so special. Oh. 
Her website's so cute with so much stuff about dogs there. Um, and then we want your feedback. Your feedback makes sure that we are giving you information and tips and knowledge that help make your lives more effective and efficient. So if you don't mind, grab your phone real quick, scan this QR code, give us a quick feedback as to how you feel about this webinar and maybe what you would like to see in future webinars as well. And then our parting words from our sponsor, the only one left, Elise, you got any parting words for anyone out there or where can they find you if they want to learn more about Roller? No, I just, I just put in the chat, the starting, starting a meeting with your goals. I guess it's like, that's kind of a, an agenda, but also just saying like, Hey, I want to leave this meeting with next steps, or I want to leave this meeting with, you know, what kind of swag are we going to give out at the trade show? Um, so that's definitely a big thing, but you can find us just roller.software or um, my LinkedIn or just email me just first name, last name, dot last name at roller digital. But we're always here to help. And um, even if it's not related to roller, um, just love being a part of this community. So always here to back you guys up if you need. Where's your next in-person event, Elise? Um, March is going to be trans world. Um, we're going to be at the interactive part of trans world. It's a haunted house year. place that oh, I'm so yeah. jealous. I'm, I'm super haunted. excited about this one. Cause there's like a whole Halloween show and a whole Christmas show. Like me and my two coworkers are planning on like, you know, noodling around and taking time to explore. Um, and then we'll be at amusement expo, of course. So I love amusement expo to just spend time. Um, it's a really good show to really spend time with people um, because it's not quite as chaotic as like an IAPA or something. So um, we'll be at both of those. Awesome. You will also find us at Amusement Expo. Uh, Dan or Jerome, do you have our booth number off the top of your head? 2330. I actually know it. Actually, it's 2330. I got it. We'll be at Amusement. <laughs> You'll find Beth, myself, Dan, and Jerome. And Mar Maria, I see that you have your hand raised. Let's see if I can uh, allow you to talk um, if you would like. And it may you may have accidentally done it. But if you have a question, we'd love to answer it for you. I don't see her unmuting. So Denise, I see you're keeping an eye on that too. Okay. All right. Next up, Denise, would you like to put out a formal invitation to everyone who's here? Absolutely. So something that we all kind of think about is trying to get that media coverage. Um, it shouldn't cost you anything. Um, when done right, it can be wildly effective for helping to connect you with your community uh, and making them aware of the great things that you do at your location. So I actually have a history in broadcast journalism. I've been uh, a broadcast journalist for over 27 years. Um, before I joined Trainertainment, um, have won numerous Emmys and Murrows and all of those fun things with, with my team. And I want to help you learn how you can harness the power of your local media to help make people aware of what's happening at your location. So if you're interested in finding out what you can do to get that media attention, uh, and also what to do when you don't want that media attention. You know what I'm talking about. Um, tune in uh, April 18th, and we'll be going through all that fun stuff. So I hope you'll join us. Also, and the registration is open on our website now. All right, Maria, are you able to talk? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I just wanted, oh, you put it back up. I just wanted to scan, what do you call this? QR, QR code. code. QR code. I just wanted it back up so I could scan it. Oh, okay. So I can give you feedback. So what do I do? Just take a picture of it? Take a picture of it. It should come up with a link that you can hit and it should take you right there. There will also be a email after this webinar that will have a link directly to the survey in case you don't get this. Oh, thank yes. you very much though. This was, this was very interesting. Um, I'm not in the position that does meetings a lot, um, mm -hmm. but I think it's very interesting to pass up. Oh, yeah. Please share the information with whoever you think will benefit from it. Paul, did you have a question? It looked like your hand was up for a minute. Okay. 
All right. Well, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for, I know there's a lot of things you could be doing with your hour. Thank you for spending it with Train Entertainment and with Linda. And we hope to see you uh, the next one. Thanks, everyone.